Hello YouTube, here's Jimac with another tutorial, but this time it's not about motion design done in Blender as you're used to. Uh, this time, due to popular request, I have prepared something on icon design. Uh, I haven't done a lot of icon design recently, but uh, it's definitely one of the areas uh, that I enjoy doing immensely and also something that I've been doing for ages now. And I think it's fair to start with uh, a little overview of how we got where we are today. We, in GNOME 3, we have two sort of completely different styles in place. It's the full color tango style that you're seeing here uh, in front of you, and then the symbolic style, which we're slowly uh, phasing in in many areas of the interface. Now, where we use the full color icons is mainly uh, for application launchers. So, the sort of uh, identity for an application that you see when you're launching it, but also for you know uh, documents, uh, ty document types and and devices and that sort of thing. And you're mostly seeing them in this super high resolution um, rendering, but historically we started with uh, tiny icons, these low resolution icons that we used all over the interface. They were in menus and toolbars, and there's been you know, tons of embedded views. And it was important and uh, it took us a whole deal of effort to make sure that they are crisp so that they, they do fit to the final render grid. And we started off doing that by actually having a bitmap workflow. So we did uh, create these in a bitmap editor, GIMP. And, um, the problem was that because the icons showed up in, in different um, sizes, we had to essentially recreate the same icon across uh, different resolutions, and it was a tedious process. And um, you know, it's not just the result; it's also the process that is important. And we didn't really have a good story there. It was very hard to. Uh, iterate to, to go back and, and change uh, something about an icon if you had to do it essentially you know four times per icon and um, so at some point we devised new workflow uh, working with these huge or, or big sheets where a single icon would be visible uh, in all the sizes and could borrow elements of it and that process later, um, you know, we benefited uh, from that process by adding a new size when Mac OS X uh, came up with these high resolution icons. Um, it was actually a lot easier for us to, to do that, although uh, a lot of what we focused on, uh, which was, you know, having a legible shape that is pixel perfect do not quite apply for the for the high resolution so that that alone is a sort of a different style but then uh, we sort of realized that uh, we need a completely different style for um, communicating status and uh, there's been a, more places where we wanted to have a more uh, a subtle uh, style for you know uh, embedded lines of text and, 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 and a status icon or that sort of thing so we came up with style highly inspired by the Intel's Moblin project and uh, GNOME symbolic icons came to life and with it also came a slight shift um, in the workflow because it is a very simplistic style um, it allowed us to actually uh, not only have a single size 
on on the canvas but to have the whole set on the canvas and it helps a lot because you sort of have a, a glimpse an overview of how the whole set looks it's like looking at the whole uh, font rather than just having a single glyph uh, in front of your face but let's start from the beginning most of the times the process begins with a sketch a sketch is good to do so that you know that uh, an idea for the metaphor is actually doable and many times it feels like you figure it out but then in practice it's impossible to draw it so that it's actually recognizable there's many cases where you can skip the sketching but for especially for for the symbolic icons it's a good idea to try it out it's very you know quick to do and in fact despite uh, you know you looking at a sketch of a high detail icon uh, if you're doing symbolics is actually good to suck at sketching because um, then you really know that you can pull it off with with just a simple shape in Inkscape. I might need to do um, a, a short introduction to Git for graphic designers but let's just assume that you have successfully cloned the GNOME icon theme symbolic module off uh, the git gnome.org server and uh, you start off by opening up the uh, gnome stencils sheet that you will find in the source src uh, directory and you will see that we have uh, all of the symbolic icons in one place there so it's easy to borrow existing assets and you get a nice overview like I said so uh, you will notice that there are a number of layers which in fact are just groups in terms of the SVG that Inkscape uh, generates and uh, these map to the context that we have for structuring the icon theme um, it's just for you to to uh, put the icon in the right place based on the icon naming standard that we have in place now by now you probably figured that we have a script that actually walks this giant plate and chops up the individual icons so for that script to work what you need to do is to create a group that consists of your actual artwork and then uh, a bounding rectangle that is precisely 16 by 16 pixels uh, of size and um, make sure that it doesn't have any fill or any stroke assigned to it the best way to ensure that you got the dimensions right because Inkscape tends to so, uh, do some rounding errors uh, for the sizes because everything is kept uh, as a float number so um, just duplicate an existing rectangle uh, and delete everything um, you do that by entering the group and uh, with control enter and then you can work on the object individual objects in terms of the actual artwork we use a two pixel stroke on that 16 pixel canvas to outline you know, the major silhouette of the icon and then if you need to then you can use a one pixel line to sort of add some details but generally avoid details it needs to be as simple as possible once you're done creating the artwork make sure that all the objects are actually within the group make sure that the group really is only 16 by 16 that you're not overshooting the bounding box and to make sure the group is named in the object properties um, uh, and we use the Inkscape uh, description field to put the file name in there or, or name of the icon 
And then you can use the rendering script, which is written in Ruby, and it calls the actual GUI application Inkscape to like do the crop. It's a little clumsy, but that's what we use now. And then once you're done that, just make sure that the exported icon is actually uh, resembling what you intended, and then you can add everything into the repository. And uh, if you are a beginner Git user, hope that you don't have somebody else messing around the same thing because resolving uh, conflicts with the Inkscape generated SVGs is a little tricky, but I'm sure that uh, I'll get back to this in some future episode. So that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this overview of how we do symbolic icons. As you can probably tell, it's not uh, the, although, you know, sometimes simple things are very difficult to do so that the shape is, you know, pleasant to look at and, and the metaphor works, but still, generally uh, creating a symbolic icon is easier in terms of time investment than doing the high resolution, highly detailed full color icons that I've showed you at the beginning. Mm, I'm not ruling out the possibility uh, to do uh, a tutorial or, or perhaps more of a time lapse of how we do the full color ones but uh, usually we spend like a week or even more of iteration on, on a single icon of that sort. Uh, so uh, you can't really do uh, a tutorial in the same sense as you've been following the Blender ones. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, hopefully uh, it will inspire one of you or perhaps more to uh, talk to us uh, and uh, uh, submit your own artwork. Take care guys and bye bye.